Member Statements The Member for Hastings, Lettings, and Addington Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise today to speak about an innovative company that is joining us here today in the Legislature. Most of us will recognize the name Izumi from countless sport fishing championships and an incredible 38-year television show highlighting places to fish all across Ontario, the best recreational fishing in the world. To the members of this House, I want to let you know that Izumi Aquaculture, led by brothers Wayne and Bob Izumi, are here today to tell us about the tremendous new industry that they're helping to build. They are utilizing floating raceways in a former pit quarry sites in a matter that actually improves the surrounding environment while building our capacity to feed ourselves and so many more. Fresh fish is a dietary staple, a wonderfully nutritious and delicious protein that adds to the very wide palate that is good things grow here in Ontario. Upper Canada steelhead salmon is delicious, and all of us are invited to join the Izumi brothers and several other members of the team at Izumi Aquaculture to sample the delectable treat that is locally sourced and expands our food security and capacity. I hope you will all join us today, after question period, in room 230 for a taste and to learn more about this innovative approach. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton West, and Castor Dundas. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I had the honour of attending the opening uh, for the Ockmar Manor, which is an historic building in my riding. The Ockmar Manor was built in 1855 by Sir Isaac Buchanan, a political leader who represented Hamilton in the Legislative Assembly of the province of Ontario pre-Confederation. The manor is just one of the magnificent buildings in the area that are an important a legacy of our history. Walking through Hamilton, Dundas, Ancaster, you can visit historic locations like Dundurn Castle, once the family home of Queen Camilla's great-great-grandmother. Everywhere you go is a celebration of the pairing between food and heritage. You can grab a bite at the Collins Brew House, built in 1840, dine at Quadrifoil, built in the 1860s, grab a beer at uh, the Coach and Lantern, built into the 1700s and used during the War of 1812, or meet friends at Vibrant Café Domestique, which was built in 1911. The organization that hosted me is Doors Open Hamilton, who prepare these buildings for tourists offer walking uh, tours and do advocacy for their preservation locally and here at Queen's Park. I want to thank the organizers who gave their time, especially local historians Stan Nowak, Diane Dent, Richard Allen, Shannon Kyle, and the many, many others, the many volunteers who give their time to uh, honour and preserve these great buildings to make sure that they are standing for many future generations to enjoy. Thank you so much for all that you do in the riding of Hamilton West, Ancaster, Dundas. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Glengarry, Prescott Russell. Merci. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, with uh, sadness that I speak to you today to let you know that there was a tragedy that took place uh, in my riding. I was awakened by a President of Prescott Russell that uh, three police officers uh, responded to a, a domestic uh, call in Bourgette and there was a shooting and one of the police officers is uh, is deceased and I, I'd like to say that uh, we're thinking of the uh, family members uh, and the colleagues of uh, Officer Mueller and to say that to our first responders that we're there to help them and we think we're thinking of them for a small community such as Bourgette, where there's practically uh, 500 citizens, uh, or just a bit over that, and, and it's not something that we expect in such a community. I'm proud to be in a government that supports uh, police officers and to ensure that they have all the tools that they need to help uh, their uh, citizens and to do their work on a daily basis. I'd like to uh, say that we're thinking of um, all first responders, and we hope that they all have all of the tools necessary so that they can overcome this difficult time. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Kiwetno. Uh, speaker. Uh, good morning. Uh, 
this week is uh, Nurses Week, and I'd like to talk about nurses in, in, north, uh, in the north. Federal nurses working in flying First Nations clinics are in a crisis. They work 24-hour shifts uh, in out-of-date facilities, thousands of miles away from their homes and families. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I know this takes a toll on their mental uh, and physical health, and the burnout is at all-time high. These are the, the health care crisis uh, faced by the people of Kiwetnuk is made worse by these conditions, which leads to uh, uh, unnecessary suffering. It leads to uh, needless deaths. All levels of government have a treaty obligation to provide health care. Rather than dealing with the causes uh, of this recruitment and retention crisis, the federal government spends millions of dollars contracting out work to private nursing agencies. And on, we know the Ontario does the exact same thing. This approach uh, leaves patients in the north uh, without the consistency and the quality of care uh, they deserve and creates a situation where staff and nurses are working alongside freelance workers and, and double their salaries. We cannot uh, continue to accept this. Uh, this is uh, not normal. We need to improve. I'd like to say to the nurses, miigwech, uh, thank you for the work that you do in the north. Miigwech. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Oakville. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. I'm incredibly proud to recognize and celebrate the achievements of some of Oakville's most innovative business and successful entrepreneurs at the 28th annual Oakville Awards for Business Excellence. The event was organized by the Oakville Chamber of Commerce and the Rotary Club of Oakville West. I would like to extend my congratulations and recognize the awards recipients. The recipient of the RBC Large Business of the Year Award, Reunion Coffee Roasters. The Bell Community Builder Award, the Oakville Community Foundation. The O'Connor McLean Hanna Professional Services Provider of the Year Award, Wellness for the Body. The Kojiko Entrepreneur of the Year Award, Star Quality Private Investigations. The Henderson Partners Mid-Sized Business of the Year Award, Ultimate Pool Service. The Visit Oakville Tourism Award, Paradiso Restaurant. The CN Not-for-Profit Excellence Award, the Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides. The Media Resources Service Industry of the Year Award, Soccer World the KPMG Small Business of the Year Award on-the-spot carpet cleaning, the Sagan Young Professional of the Year Award, Rebecca Poynton of Spinko Oakville, and finally, the Business Icon Award Siemens Canada, which proudly has its Canadian head office in Oakville. Congratulations once again to all the award recipients. Your passion and dedication to our business and our community is inspiring. Thank you. Well said. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. As we celebrate Nursing Week in Ontario, I'd like to take a moment to thank the hard-working nurses of Ottawa West Nepean and all across Ontario, including the amazing nurses of ONA Local 83 at the Ottawa Hospital and Local 84 at the Queensway Carleton Hospital, and the wonderful RPNs of QP4000 and QP2875. Their dedication and unwavering commitment to patient care have supported so many of us through so many difficult, challenging, heartbreaking, and life-affirming moments of the past few years. And they have done all of this incredible work in spite of the very challenging conditions they've had to work in and the serious disrespect with which they have been treated by this government. A sincere and heartfelt thank you for all of the work that you do and keep on doing. Now it's time for us to have your back. It's time for the government to negotiate a fair contract, to stop fighting the court's decision on Bill 124. It's time to stop the privatization agenda that is pulling nurses out of the public health care system, leaving public hospitals short-staffed and contributing to longer wait times and frustrated patients. It's time to stop the temp agency insanity that puts profits in the pockets of investors while treating nurses on the public payroll unfairly. It's time for the government to show nurses the respect you so deserve so that you can keep on doing the job you love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Kitchener South Hesper. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I had, a, uh, I, I had a, a topic in mind that was far more cheerful, and then I woke up this morning and found that we had lost another police officer in the line of duty, Sergeant Eric Mueller. And um, 
part of me considered just standing here for the remainder of my time because there really are no words. Um, but what I what I wanted to say was to the the officers out there, the, the friends and the family, how deeply sorry I am. Um, I was the partner of a police officer for quite some time, and we were together um, during the period of the Nova Scotia shootings. And he wasn't even a patrol officer. He was in major crime, so not generally responding to calls. Uh, but after that happened, I experienced these incredible panic attacks when I would call him and he didn't immediately answer his phone. And I would have this fear that he was dead, even though most of the murders that had happened now had not even happened at that point in time. So all this to say that I understand in some small way what the families of these officers feel when they say goodbye and they go to work in the morning no longer knowing if they will come home safely and I will continue to be an advocate for them and again just express how deeply, deeply sorry I am to all of these officers. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, May is National Lyme Disease Awareness Month across Canada. It is an opportunity for Lyme patients, advocates, and educators to spread awareness about how to prevent Lyme and tick-borne diseases. I want to recognize some of the groups working tirelessly across Ontario to improve the lives of people who have Lyme disease. Linda Kelso and the Ontario Lyme Alliance, Can Lyme, Rosanna Magnata and the G. Magnata Foundation for Vector-Borne Diseases, as well as Dr. Melanie Wills with the University of Guelph Lyme Disease Research Lab. They are all advocating for more resources for patients of Lyme disease across Ontario and Canada. Lyme disease is a significant and growing health issue across our province. It is a tick-borne bacterial infection. Lyme-carrying ticks are on the rise across Canada and the highest rates of human-acquired cases in Ontario. If left undiagnosed and untreated, Lyme can mimic other diseases like ALS, multiple sclerosis, and lupus. Speaker, once May is over, people with Lyme disease will still be suffering. Ontario needs to do more to help those already diagnosed with Lyme and to prevent further spread of the disease. I encourage this government to help tackle Lyme in Ontario by implementing all 10 recommendations from the 2018 report for the Lyme Disease and Tick-Borne Illnesses Task Force. And Speaker, I challenge all MPPs to join me to take a bite out of Lyme on the front lawn this afternoon, right after question period. <laughs> Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Good morning, Speaker. And uh, I proudly rise to carry on a great nursing week tradition begun by my predecessor, Percy Hadfield, uh, to recognize in the House the recipient of this year's RNAO Lois Fairley Nursing Award, Mary Cunningham. Mary's been serving for 46 years and has been part of the intensive care unit at our Willette campus uh, since 1990. And many mentors and guides, Mary mentors and guides, all those who've had the privilege to work with her. She has helped to develop provincial standards for nursing and critical care, as well as for end-of-life programs. And it's through Mary's work to care for families as that truly uh, shines through while consistently giving of her knowledge to our community's newest nurses. Her colleagues have rightfully described her passion for caregiving as being contagious. The Fairley family and the Windsor Essex chapter of the RNAO selected Mary from among nominations received from the public. Lois Fairley, the namesake of the award, was both a graduate and an employee of Windsor's Grace Hospital for 38 years. Uh, Lois served as the director of RNAO and president of the Ontario Nurses Association, as well as sitting on the St. Clair College Nursing Program Advisory Committee. Mary Cunningham demonstrates, just as Lois Fairley did, that amazing people work in nursing, and it's truly fitting that she's bestowed this honour. 
Thank you so much, Mary, for your service to us in Windsor, Essex, and to the province of Ontario. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you so much, Speaker. And I really want to thank all the colleagues who have mentioned Nursing Week. It's truly heartwarming to receive all those wishes. So, yes, Mr. Speaker, this week is National Nursing Week, a chance for us to recognize and celebrate the invaluable contributions that registered nurses, registered practical nurses, nurse practitioners, and nursing students make to our healthcare system every day. This year's theme is Our Nurses, Our Future, using the hashtag HeyNurse, showcasing the many roles nurses play in a patient's journey to wellness, connecting patients to the high-quality care they need closer to home. As a registered nurse and a clinician myself, I recognize the invaluable contributions nurses make to our province, being the gentler touch in healthcare, the face of dignity, and the voice of compassion that so many of our patients need. As we know, nurses have worked through unprecedented challenges and have continued to rise to the occasion. That is why, Mr. Speaker, the theme Our Nurses, Our Future is synonymous to me with investing into the success of our nursing students. And, Mr. Speaker, that is exactly what our government is doing. The Learn and Stay program provides free tuition and textbooks for RN and MP students located in priority communities. And with this level of investment, Mr. Speaker, it is no surprise that in 2022, Ontario experienced a record-breaking enrollment, recruiting 30,000 nursing students to grow the workforce for future generations. So today, colleagues, let's use the hashtag HeyNurse to thank exceptional nurses in our community. Happy International Nursing Week. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.